Gillick, and I am the program director at the Northwest Chapter of American Parkinson Disease Association, um, or we call it APDA for short. So APDA is the largest grassroots network dedicated to fighting Parkinson's disease and works to assist um, people with Parkinson's disease. And our Northwest chapter is kind of part of that grassroots effort. Um, we cover the individual states of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and Alaska. But now in this virtual world, um, anyone can tune into anything that we're doing. And we do have folks from across the country who signed up for this broadcast today. Um, we, our organization works to provide support, education, and services that will help everyone impacted by Parkinson's disease live life to the fullest. Um, we truly believe that education is empowerment, and so we want to provide programs like this. Um, the support of our work is made possible through the support of donors and sponsors. So thank you so much to those of you who added a little donation when you registered. And I'd also like to recognize the sponsors of this program. Um, and those sponsors, Dr. Hogan, can you move on to the next slide? Um, we have two gold sponsors of this program, um, Boston Scientific and Kiowa Curran. Boston Scientific um, is a DBS device manufacturer and Kiowa Curran has a brand new medication for off episodes in Parkinson's. So I wanna thank them both for their value of these educational programs and for their financial support of APDA. We just couldn't do these programs without our sponsors. So thank you for that. Um, so if you missed an opportunity to donate and you are in a financial position to do so, you can do so at our website, apdaparkinson.org slash Northwest. That's also where you can find all information about all the programs and services that we do and future educational programs like this. So enough of me. I would like to introduce our speaker today. Dr. Patrick Hogan is a neurologist in private practice at Puget Sound Neurology in Tacoma. His treatment of patients is all about integrative care, and he's passionate about combining lifestyle interventions with traditional medical treatments. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Hogan. Uh, at the conclusion of your talk, we will do questions and answers, so you can type your questions um, from the audience into the Q&A box at any time and we will respond to the questions. So I am going to disappear and let you have the screen and we'll see you during the question and answer and thank you so much for being here. Good, good morning <clears throat> or good afternoon if you're a different part of the country. Uh, so yeah, today we're going to have some fun talking about a dimension of our being that is, that is our mind. And this is, this is something that we all have. We all have a mind that is unique in all the world. And yet there's such mystery about the mind, even where it actually originates in the brain. We don't know, you know, it's integrated through many different circuits. But what we do know is the power of the mind and, and the benefits that caring for our mind uh, can have in actually improving the, the brain, you know, the actual function of our brain. And of course, as, as, uh, as it would be then to, to the function of, uh, related to Parkinson's. And in, in, my, in my 40 years, almost 40 years of being a neurologist and 30 years of taking care of movement disorder people, I've recognized that this is as important as any aspect of medicine, including, you know, medications and surgeries. You have to put this as part, part of the holistic approach, you know, to taking care of people. And what we're gonna be talking about uh, somewhat here is the principles of, uh, of neuroplasticity. You know, that's the whole idea that what we want to do. It's not just, uh, you know, thinking appropriately and so forth, but what does it actually do for our brain? And this whole, this word neuroplasticity, really what it indicates is uh, the ability of our brain to mold. You know, for forever, we, we used to think of the brain as being this structure, like a statue or construction motor that, that just deteriorated over time. And, but now we know the brain is very dynamic. You know, the brain has ability to mold and ability to form new neurons. And, um, uh, but it, it doesn't do it by itself. It has to be activated. There has to be a, a stimulus uh, to, to occur to actually make this happen. 
So neuroplasticity allows the nervous system to adjust its function and structure in response to experience, as we said here. And that's what we're going to be talking about some, uh, somewhat, is, is the experiences externally and experiences internally that can um, improve our brain. And, in, and much of what we're going to be talking about is the science behind this, because so many of these things we're going to be talking about, you probably were taught, were told, were taught by your grandmother, or your, and if you, you've known throughout your life. There, you know, there are things that are by common sense we know to be true, but we just more intuitively. But now we know we have science behind this to, to, know, uh, to really measure and understand how um, lifestyle management what we do for ourselves rather than just medications and so forth can actually do for, for our brain. So in the, in the whole principle behind this is, the, is that the healthier your body and your, and your mind can be, the better your brain will work. And then it's in, in, in corollary is as you, the better your brain works, the better your Parkinson's can be controlled. It's obviously not, you know, not a cure, but it actually you know, complements greatly what, what other treatments um, you're, you're involved with. So, uh, and so you've already heard uh, this, 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 this checklist of healthy mind and body. I've been lecturing on these type of topics now for well over 20 years. And, um, but it's really more recently we've had more science behind it. But you've already heard in you know, lectures on, on exercise. And last month you heard uh, a, a, a discussion on nutrition by my wife, Joan Hogan, um, and, but now we're going to be talking about some of the other aspects. And, and you know, we're going to be talking about the, the benefits on, on, on your brain of yoga and meditation and positive attitude and, and belief, social support and, and, and a, a network connection so much that we're deprived of now, you know, the value of travel or at least planning travel even, you know, maintaining purpose in life and and hope, the, the whole ability to look forward to something uh, for the next day and to and drives your brain forward. And, and then matter of taking care of your, of your mind, you know, which requires sometimes you know, we're working hard and times when we have to rest, times with sleep, avoiding toxins, of course, and what we eat and breathe and, and, then, and then being your own small, smart health advocate. We can't just give away our health to care providers. We know we have to be you know, our own advocate for, for health. So this is a huge topic. You know, this topic has been, you know, has been written about tremendously through, you know, many different books and seminars and, and the whole idea of how do you care for your mind and your brain. And uh, so this is really more of an invitation. This whole discussion today is more of an invitation to you to become your own expert in this. And these are some of the books that, that I've used over time uh, that highlight so many of the functions that we can't all discuss today, you know, but there's some aspects of these books that are related to, to exercise. And if you have a moment, if you have an, if you have a, uh, iPhone, maybe take a picture of this, of this page, or if, um, uh, or if you can go back to it again on, on the YouTube. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you, and we see, you know, we had a, a, um, uh, you know, a discussion here by, you know, uh, by Joan, Joan's book on nutrition related to Parkinson's disease and some related to exercise. But some of these are you know, all again related to what you can do with your, your thought pattern in your brain and how do, we, how, do we, um, how do we enhance our quality of life and function by, um, uh, by what, we, what we think and do. These last two books in the, in the right really are The Mind Over Medicine um, and The Brain That Changes Itself by Dr. Deutsch uh, are really kind of over, uh, pretty much an overview of a lot of what we talk about, you know. Uh, and, you know, The Mind Over Medicine probably should be more like your, your mind in conjunction with medicine to some degree, of course, you know. But, um, uh, but it really had, it highlights much of what we're, what we're talking about. Now, every, every one can, can will add to your... Your, your comfort of understanding how to care for your brain and how to enhance your Parkinson control. So, um, yeah, so I would encourage people to, you know, to re read these as much as if they're all on, on, on Kindle and, and, but also very entertaining too. They're not high level books that are, that are, um, you know, medically related. Uh, they're, they're, they're people, they're books for you, you know, to, to learn about yourself and what to do. So the one thing, the one of the books that I think is crucial, I think everybody should read this, is a book that was written last year by uh, by Dr. Blackburn, who is a who won the Nobel Prize for this work on the tel on the telomeres. 
the telomeres are these little, if I had a pointer, I could show you, but these little, um, uh, little ends of the, of these little white ends on the, on the side of, of, of the DNA. That was like little pieces of the shoe, end, ends of the shoelaces, you know, that hold all the strands together. And, and that's very much what, it, what they are like. And they're, they have a length to them. Um, and as time goes on, these telomeres slowly deteriorate. And when they, when they finally deteriorate completely, the cell dies. And that's one of the basis for a lot, much of the basis for aging. You know, why I have, well, we have gray hair and, and, and some visual changes and wrinkles and, and, and for, unfortunately many of the changes that happen in our brain because of this uh, lack, this destruction of the telomeres eventually and in loss of the, um, uh, of the function of the cell. But the, the thing that, that's so fascinating is that we have the capacity to make a difference in these telomeres. It's not just the fate that they're just going to wear out to some degree. They're, we were able, actually truly able to measure them now. And actually there's chemicals we can measure and, and, and uh, length that can be measured that can document that what we can do that to lengthen the telomeres and extend their life and what we can do that can shorten them and, and, and hasten their destruction. And so things that we've already heard about is exercise and plant-based foods and even coffee. You know, you were in the Northwest, you know, it, one more great thing about coffee is that actually has been shown people that drink you know, too much. It's a little bit too enhancing, but that moderate amount actually seems to have a, 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 a studies showing that it lengthens the telomeres. But then otherwise, as much of it related to our, our, our thought pattern, you know, what we can do with, with meditation and play and play and fun, and taking care of our brain, our youthful attitude, we'll talk more about that, social cohesiveness, being together, as opposed to, to the things that shorten it is, is a bad stress. We'll talk about the difference between bad stress and, and, uh, uh, and good stress, and, uh, but, or bad foods, you know, the stand, that's it, sad is a standard American diet, inactivity, social isolation, sleep deprivation, chemical exposure, uh, exposures, tobacco, pollution, plastics, all these things have been actually been shown to increase in the destruction of the telomere. So we'll, we'll, talk, we'll go into that more and you'll hear that, more, that word more. <clears throat> and then uh, epigenetics, another very important word. Now the, the, uh, the telomere more deals with more the health of the, of the DNA. Epigenetics means we have a means of actually controlling our own DNA. We're born with a certain uh, genotype, which means we, we, you know, the genes that we have from, from our parents, but, the, but how the genes are expressed is the phenotype. That means the, in, in that, that even though we have a gene for something with the, the right the lifestyle factors, environmental factors, and as we'll see, even mind factors, we have ability to change how our DNA is expressed. So your DNA isn't your destiny, it's just a template that we can, we can alter uh, with the right means. And it's really, it really comes down to, it's like a, a, a mark. There's little things on there called epigenetic marks. When they first um, documented the genome, you know, 20, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, how many ago? 30, 20 years ago now, um, you know, they said, well, that's it, we've got the genome. But then they realized that besides the genome, we have these thousands more of, uh, of these little epigenetic marks that actually can not just, not, that not, it's not just the gene, but to turn on the gene or turn off the gene. And so since that time, there's just been whole departments and all these universities have developed on the epigenetic department, thousands of, of, of articles written now, and, and it's going to be really going to be a means of, of, of therapy in the future if we can alter our, our genetic pathways by, the, by our epigenetics. And it, it gets much more complicated than that rather than just switches. You know, there's really a lot of us, you know, we, we don't need to know, but that I, it's beyond my understanding of how, just how we do this chromatin remodeling with DNA methyl, methylation, histone acetylation, things you don't rec need to recognize, know. But it's really the whole idea though, it's through lifestyle changes that we can, we can uh, mold our phenotype, uh, phenotype expression. So, um, uh, and it's a idea of molding your DNA. So because our, our hereditary uh, accounts for they say, you know, the, the value is like 15% of our longevity, about 25% of our overall health. The remainder is related to our lifestyle changes and environmental exposure, the whole principle of epigenetics. And, and that's the idea of what we're doing today is what can we, we talk about how can we 
what things can we do that can enhance those, uh, life, those lifestyle choices and our environmental exposures? Because um, the whole idea is, is to, to die, in, uh, to, to, is to, it, the goal of life is to die young. I came too quickly. <laughs> the, the, the goal of life is to die young, but as late in life as possible. So um, that's the whole principle of, uh, of health span versus uh, lifespan. You know, you know, it's not just a matter of how long we can live, it's a matter of how do we maintain the youthfulness of ourselves as, as late in life as possible and maintain vitality as, as much as possible. Even if we have another uh, uh, disorder, and, and disease such as Parkinson's, we have so much of our, also our brain that we can enhance and, and, um, and preserve to, to enhance our, our health span throughout life. So well, let's talk a little bit about exercise. Now you've already had a you know a lecture on about, about exercise. And you think, well, just your muscles. What does that have to do with the mind? Well, yeah, and the the mind is is totally integrated there. I mean, you've heard about this through you know through professional athletes or any any athlete. Uh, you know, it's uh, you know fifteen percent of it is um, uh, is your fitness, and 85, 90 percent is is psychological. Your motivation, your mind is what actually produces the um, the the end end. Uh, the end result um, performance, and <clears throat> but this you know this but this mind with doing exercise is is so is so difficult because it, you know as everyone knows exercise is one of the most crucial things that you can do for treatment of your Parkinson's, but you first have to have your mind engaged to be able to get the motivation, which is often difficulty with Parkinson's, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but. Um, uh, but the end result here is that as you exercise, you develop this chemical, maybe I've been talked about er earlier, is brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. You just remember that BDNF. It's something you should be thinking about every time you exercise, every time we, we, with, my, with physical exercise or mind exercise, we're trying to activate that BDNF. This is a chemical that was discovered now that truly is the key to uh, why when we exercise, we get a chemical release back to our brain, which releases that, chem that the BDNF, which helps to actually form new brain cells, rejuvenate the lost brain cells, and um, helps prevent um, damage from in injury. So it promotes you know, uh, plas plasticity, I mean, that whole plasticity aspect again, and neuro neuronogenesis means forming new brain cells. One time we didn't think that was possible. We thought, you know, you had, you're born with a number of brain cells that you, you, you had and that was it, you know. <laughs> but now we realize you can actually form new brain cells, but you have to have activation of this BDNF for that to happen. And you have to, it has to be activated enough with enough um, uh, triggers, so of, uh, enough, um, uh, what's the right word, um, function or you know, some things that we do that would actually make, the, make this happen. So, um, uh, and as a result, it, it, it feeds back to your brain too. So we're not just talking about muscular effects as the BNF, as the BNF increases, your, your brain incur, uh, improves so that you actually are able to move better, you have greater mobility, greater balance, all these things that are so important with exercise, but actually feeds back to your brain to improve your cognitive function and your mind control. And that's really the key for this. And you know, one of the things that we're again that we that we have with with Parkinson's is and with with many people, and it's not everybody. Some people are extremely motivated, but it's almost part of the disorder for so many people that there's there's sense sense a sense of inborn uh, loss of, of motivation. Even though you feel, you know you should be exercising, you know you should be doing these things, and it's often a real frustration for for caregivers and family members. They, I get out there and exercise and you just don't feel like it, you know, but um, uh, the whole idea is how do we make it happen, you know, in, uh, in, uh, because it all comes down to the brain neuroplasticity again. We have to develop this epigenetics and if it, if it, uh, it doesn't happen without the effort to make it happen. And so, you know, one of the things that we, that we try to encourage people um, to, when, 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 it's not because of the word often is as work, you know, work with your muscles, you know, work with your, with your mind control and so forth is, is play, you know, play and fun are like, essentially they think of them as vitamins of your mind. And if, uh, if you can do things that have some fun to it and play to that. So even though you're exercising to try to make it 
something that's fun. It's always a challenge to find those things. But you know, we often, you know, we do things that are that are um, uh, that, that are exercise. But that, uh, you know, my wife and I we do a lot of triathlons, so we're we're exercising a lot. A lot of it's not very much fun at all. But we know that during the end result is positive. But then they try to get in the other other aspects of of fun, which is exercising with you know, whether it's kayaking or paddle boarding and swimming and so forth. But, but even if it comes down to, you know, being with family and playing and uh, being with, you know, with your kids and, and grandkids and, and just doing something that produces that fun, you know, the fun of fun, you lose, you lose um, connection with the rest of the world during that time. And that really does have an enhancement of your mind rather than just your, your brain. So as it says in the thing, it, it, it shapes the brain, opens imagination, and invigorates the soul. So, you know, uh, so it's not just work. We need, we need play too. You know, um, then we can talk about stress. You know, obviously today's world, especially, we're really are, are, are stuck with a lot of stress. There's a lot of people that have way more stress than we, than we should have. Uh, for the effect of our brain, and you know, and it's so been so re so recognized over, you know, forever that you know that so many of the, the conditions that we deal with in day to day life are in part related to stress, and it's there, and this is a toxic stress. So there's a toxic stress, and then there's a challenging stress. So we you know we're talking a little more about how do we re how do we release stress from our brain. We'll talk more about that, but one of the things, another word to remember is a word that's called hormesis. Hormesis means that we put a challenge to our brain. So it can be stressful. Sometimes when you have goals to, uh, to achieve, sometimes even exercise, it could be it's stressful why we're we doing it uh, often. But um, you know, another stress is just adapting to Parkinson's. When you've had the diagnosis of Parkinson's and you're trying to adapt to it, that's a considerable stress. But the idea is that just by coping with that stress, how we cope with the stress, it's not just what happens to you, you've heard millions of times, now what happens to you is how you cope with it, how you deal with it. And, and um, this, this word hormesis means that if you, you're exposed to certain levels of stress, that your body is able to handle subsequent stresses. Um, adapt, you, you adapt, our human beings, that's what makes us you know, so amazing as a human being is that we're able to adapt. But a lot of that requires this whole concept of hormesis, of being exposed to certain stresses along the way so that when we are exposed to some toxic stresses in some other ways with disease or, or, or toxic stress or, or psychological stresses that our brains and our minds and our bodies are able to, to handle, it, handle it better. But on the other hand, <laughs> we don't want to have too much stress. We need to diffuse. And uh, so the old proverb from Zen, you know, you, 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 we should you sit and meditate for 20 minutes every day, unless you're too busy. Well, then you should meditate for an hour. You should sit for an hour. And that's, I mean, that's the whole idea because we you know we're so wrapped up into this, you know, don't just, don't just sit there, do something, you know, get out there. But in some ways it should be, don't, you know, don't, don't do something, just sit there. And because we, you know, we need that time to defuse. And, and one of the best ways is this whole, this whole concept of meditation, of, 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 of taking that, that stress out of your mind, you know, really just, really is, it really is a mind exercise, you know, it's just like a physical exercise uh, to calm the brain circuits, bring peace and harmony inside, stress control and pain control. And, and, there's, um, and there's ways to do this, you know, there's many ways to, um, uh, to be trained to meditate. Uh, there's great apps out there. There's, there's an app that, that a lot of people use is called Calm, C-A-L-M, Calm. Another one um, that I use is called Insight Timer. And they have uh, a motivation, they have guidance, they have lectures uh, that are inspiring. Um, and it, you know, it gives you a little run, rundown on how often you've, uh, uh, you've meditated and how long, you know, and I, it, you know, it doesn't mean anything to anybody else, but you know, it, it helps me go. And for, you know, this morning, you know, my, you know, my Insight Timer said I've had 754 days of consec consecutive days without missing any of my uh, yoga meditation um, uh, program. And so and I wouldn't want to miss any because I wouldn't want to start back to one again. So it gets a kind of thing that kind of pulls you along, you know. And but so these, you know, these apps are really good. And there's a lot of them have re really good background. Some of them have just good training. They have lectures that teach you how to meditate. 
the whole idea is, is just like any other skill. People say, oh, you know, I can't meditate, I can't get my head to, to stop, to stop uh, learn, learn to calm down. But it's like anything else. You don't run a marathon the first time. You start at a very slow, a slow amount, maybe a couple minutes. And you build up to the point of allowing your brain just to soothe. You know, not to you know, try to avoid thinking. You, know, you, can, you can, can focus on a certain concept of empathy or meditation or mantra. Uh, but just to focus on that and let everything else go and let your brain uh, calm down. And we'll show a little more, more uh, 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 information about that in a second. And again, we know, we've always known this is good for us, but now we actually have, again, science. We actually, they've been showing, showing with, uh, that you can actually lengthen those telomeres. Remember those telomeres? You know, we actually can um, uh, increase the the chemicals in length of the telomeres to enhance the cell um, cell health, you know, and epigenetics again, epigenetic changes to turn on those right genes in the in the in the genome uh, to reduce inflammation, big factor in our brains, and and the effects of stress. So you know, this is, these are real things. It's not just some nebulous concept, but these are real things that happen in our brain. And there's a book, you know, Alter Traits. This one of all those books, this one is a little bit um, hard to read. Again, a lot of science, uh, but it, it, not even necessary because you end up with, a, with this huge book and you end up with just the concept, well, I guess meditation really does work. You know, it, it actually shows how, how it really can alter your, your mind, your brain and your body with physiological changes. So, you know, because we've known, there's, you know, if you have stress, you can have more pain. It's just the way the brain works. You can have more anxiety, you can have more depression. If we can decrease that stress, it's less suffering, less, you know, less um, uh, impact on your, on your body and your brain. And, you know, there's whole, there's whole departments at the University of Massachusetts Medical School, very renowned uh, uh, institution uh, that has a whole, pro, a whole uh, department on mindfulness and we've done a lot of work over time documenting the, um, uh, the or yet decades documenting the effects. And as they say specifically in their quote, you know, we think that uh, in the ways that we think and behave can have a significant effect for better or worse. You can think wrong too, you know, make things worse on our physical health or our capacity to lead lives of high quality and satisfaction. So why not? You know, if, if you can do this, you know, it's definitely not going to hurt and certainly it's going to help you. you know? And we've done, and you can document again with science. You know, there's, um, uh, there's, this is a PET scan that shows areas of the brain that when you, when you get better at, at meditating and can get to that point where you're just letting everything else go, that you enhance this, uh, this network in the brain called the default mode network. And it's the kind of the part of the brain that's activated when people are just kind of off in a reverie and daydreaming, or if you're meditating, it just kind of calms your brain and when this circuit activates. And they've shown that when this, when this, uh, when this uh, area activates that uh, it actually improves your, your um, uh, creativity and your ability to focus better. So it's actually a, a um, uh, you know, and really an exercise for your, for your mind, you know, but we can document again, it's not just, um, you know, not just something we just think it happens, but we can now show it really does happen. But and you can, and a person can meditate in many different ways, you know, again, you know, besides the, all the different apps and so forth, just they have, you know, there's a book that's called Running with the Mind about, of Meditation. You know, walking, you know, you can do, as we'll talk about yoga is a really good way, uh, you know, and visualization, you know, you know, if you can visualize uh, and just, you know, just focus on the way you would like to be. You know, as you know, with, with, with athletics, we do that all the time. We, we could be trying a skill, but uh, people use visualization all the time to improve their skill without actually, actually, without actually practicing. Just visualizing hitting that tennis ball or hit, visualizing or running or swimming, you know, it actually enhances our brain. The same way, if we can just visualize how we like our brains to be, how visualize how our language should be, that's a form of meditation. Some people don't like the word meditation. Sometimes there's religious connotations. So, I mean, you can you can you can do it in the form of prayer if you like, you know. But, but as long as it's it's more of a, the right kind of prayer that, that gets you internal, like a prayer of gratitude. You know, gratitude is so important. You know, it's it's so much been written about that too. Just re being being thankful for what we have, thankful for the world and, and there are things that are positive in our world. 
Um, and that's, you know, so uh, prayer of gratitude, prayer of compassion, prayer of empathy are all, all different ways of getting into your brain. So another way is yoga. You know, yoga is, uh, is, is not just about posture. Think of being these, 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 pre, these uh, pretzels that people get into. It's, it's, it's another pathway for mind-body integration, enhan enhancing the parasympathetic tone. We hear about that a lot with meditation too, enhancing parasympathetic tone. So there's sympathetic nervous system that is a fight or flight activity where it gets, your heart rate gets going, your brain gets activated. And then you have the parasympathetic tone where you're trying to enhance, where you bring things down, blood pressure comes down, heart rate comes down, your mind is, is, uh, is relaxed. Um, and yoga has, some, has means of doing this, but part of my routine every, every day. And there's, you know, again, very good um, um, medical documentation on the management of chronic disease and on their mind-body health on, on the benefits of yoga. We did a, I did a, a, a DVD a uh, few years ago with my, my son who deals with yoga and, and mind and body and, and mind um, integration in New York City uh um for, for um movement disorders and yes yeah, you know if people are at home and they can't move you know this is a this is a great uh website actually you know in um it's called in aligned movement.com in aligned movement.com and he has many different um, um little uh 20 minute sections that that you can learn about yoga and about just by improving your posture and relaxing you know relaxing your mind so it's all many different pathways to the same end result, but all important for your health. And then we have this whole problem we have in today's world. You know, we've talked forever about, the, you know, our, you know we've, we have the main, main value of our support groups, you know, that I've, we, and I, I have dystonia support group. I have a, you know, Parkinson's support group. For 25 years, I've had this tobacco cessation support group. All these things, because getting people together is powerful. And, and human beings cannot live alone. I mean, the isolation and loneliness have major health risks. And um, in this book here, it's another really good book, Into the Magic Shop. It's, it's kind of a funny name, but you'll get into it. It's a neurosurgeon, Dr. Dr. Doty, who really discusses so much about why it's so important for us to integrate our, our lives with others and, and, and the whole value of positive thought. There's so much is, the whole book is about positive thought and, and, and arranging our attitude towards life so that we can make positive things happen. And, uh, and Dr. Mur uh, Murthy um, wrote this book. He, he wrote this book over the last two years. Uh, and he was a previous Surgeon General of the United States and about the healing power of human connection in sometimes lonely world. And it just happened that it was released just two months ago during the, right during this, uh, this COVID epidemic. But he again emphasizes the same thing, that the lack of social connection is dangerous to our health. It's, it's, it's harmful as 15 cigarettes, cigarettes per day. So obviously a major health in, impact to our, to our, um, our, our body, but, um, but social isolation and, and uh, loneliness is um, it has definitely has an impact on our mind, which then impacts our brain, which then impacts our entire body. So I don't have any any you know the right formula here because nobody knows exactly how much should we be connected, how much we shouldn't. We it all takes this this it all takes this uh, this common sense and and judgment um, to stay to stay uh, activated and stay connected to people in some way. You know, the people that you know are safe that you that you need to be around. Um, and um, without, of course, you know, with adequate protection too. So again, we're every day, and every one of us is, is battling with that, you know. <clears throat> I, you know I, it's so nice to be able to speak here right now without a mask on, you know. <laughs> and you know, we, all, we have all these masks every day that we wear all day long for this protection, you know. To, but, but the whole idea, again, is still maintaining that connection with someone. And, um, and you know, if anything else, if we, with this, when this gets all gets over, our ability to connect with each other again is going to be one of our greatest uh, um, uh, treasures, treasures that we're going to, going to have. Because right now, you know, as opposed to this value of, of uh, connection with people, people are thinking of people as dangerous, you know, and, and avoiding connection. So we need to get back to that, that recognition that, that human connection is something that are human beings are actually, um, it's vital to our existence. Like George Burns says, you know, 
of course, people, people remember George Burns, you know, he died at age 90, 96. He said, the secret to longevity is having a large, loving, caring, close-knit family in another city. <laughs> and, you know, it's you know, the whole idea. Maybe there's enough of a good thing, you know. <laughs> it's a funny little statement, but, <clears throat> but, it, but it's really true. The other, another little mind uh, exercise uh, in, or mind vitamin <laughs> essentially is travel. Now we can't do much of that now, you know, but we, you know, for, for many years, we've still been saying, we've been talking about all the, all the, uh, the proven health benefits of travel, but it doesn't always have to be just the travel. Uh, the, 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 one of the best be benefits of travel is the planning of a travel, you know, thinking about where you're gonna going, looking at pictures, arranging um, all the connections, um, and because the travel may only last a week and yet, but you can, you can look forward to the anticipation of travel uh, for months ahead of time. And so we really encourage people to, um, uh, even despite today's world, to still think about the world. Think about all the great places that you could see. Look, look them up. You actually, you know, actually even potentially arrange a, 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 um, a travel for the uh, upcoming year, uh, months or years. And um, and think, look forward to it because there sure is. This is again scientifically proven that 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 getting into a different venue to think about getting out of your bubble is um, is something that's is valuable valuable for your brain. Uh, and then you know when you can do it, then of course you have these long time of, of memories of the travel too. So it's it's um, and we and we can travel locally. You know people you know have, have done so much more travel now uh, with in, into local areas. Again, is is trying to, to think about. It's more the the getting your mind involved with being excited. You know, we have to get excited for life. You know, and this is one of the things that we can do is is, is think about where we would like to go, even if we can't go there, and uh, get our brains engaged into that in that type of exercise. So um, now another aspect here is um, is this is probably really the, one of the whole keys here is 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 our attitude. You know, the, the, you know, there's nothing that's more, um, that best characterizes the mind is our attitude towards life. And is this just, uh, is this just uh, ho -hum or just the fluff stuff that we've heard over time? People say, oh, he beat that disease or uh, he's doing so well because of his attitude. You know, is, you know, what does that really mean? But we have really good science showing that attitude really does make a difference. So we, we truly, it makes us masters of our fate, not just victims of our genes. Dr. Lipton, you know, had, they did a classic work, you know, on, uh, called The Biology of Belief, which again, very readable book um, uh, that really emphasizes the whole concept of how we think affects our brain function. You know, where we think of this as electrical stimulation in our brain with our mind, how does it actually affect our physical being? Well, it, it definitely does. And he really gets in down into the deep of it, quantum mechanics. We're talking about the, the, you know, the neutrons and the quarks, you know, we deep in our, in our, in our being that are, that are make up every cell that we have, um, it has, uh, has some, effect uh, that can be affected through thought and, um, and belief uh, and our positive beliefs, again, producing this epigenetic changes uh, that, that uh, uh, help um, our brain function and then subsequently our body function. And so some of the things that he said in here, you know, are important, you know, that our, our thoughts, attitudes, um, uh, shape our molds and our, our body through epigenetics. So it's at the quantum level of our cells, you know, these little tiny beats, there, he's saying that, you, that that's the environment of your cell. And, um, and if, you're, if we have the right attitude, we can truly uh, can make a difference. So attitude can change the DNA through epigenetics to alter the structure and function of the brain. That's really, really his, the goal of his, of his whole book. And then optimism, you know, to have this whole idea of looking forward, of, of, not, of not being discouraged by life, but be, you know, despite everything that happens to us, be optimistic um, approach to life. And there's some really good other studies and books. There's a real good book called Long Longevity Pro um, uh, Project that documented throughout life that, uh, what, 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 actually, what characteristics improve people's health and, and, and happiness uh, throughout life. And the whole idea of having hope for something to be better over time, to be optimistic, is a, is a, improves our, um, our, our quality of life. 
So uh, again, you say same type of thing. And thought energy can affect how our genes are expressed. Um, our attitude and positive thought can produce epigenetic change and how the brain functions. The bottom line is we become masters of our fate. We can actually make a difference and not be victims of what's, what we have uh, genetically. Um, and then there's this whole idea of fear. You know, we, gosh, in today's world, we're, we're succumbed to fear. People are often are you know, too intertwined with what's going on in the whole world and is bringing, them, is bringing into themselves, you know, this whole concept of fear. But, but those that have that hope, belief, gratitude again, live healthier, and healthier lives than those living with sadness, hopelessness, and fear. It's, you know, the old, the old saying, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And as we know, there's per different aspects of politics that, that promote or, or, or bring, bring out fear or hope. So it's um, so the whole idea is you know to try to get get these negative emotions uh, to suppress the negative emotions as much as possible because the negative emotions put our, our brain out of rhythm, suppress neuroplasticity. So we've got to somehow recognize the world. You know we can't do, we can't ignore it. You know we know it's out there, but not try to keep your own bubble as safe as possible. You know maintain that hope, belief, gratitude. Uh, and, up, uh, and, uh, and optimism that things will be better uh, because that's really what's going to help, you, help your brain rather than deteriorate your, your brain over time. The whole idea again that we came back to that, <coughs> we want to uh, uh, <coughs> die young as uh, uh, <coughs> die young but as late as life as possible. <coughs> and um, uh, the whole idea is, is uh, think young for a healthy brain. Those who, who think of aging in a positive way live, live longer. And, and we have ways of keeping our telomeres healthy. Cells are going, they're, start, they're going to age, but no use making them age before their time. And we can do that with this whole concept of how to achieve a healthy brain that's uh, very important to, to do along with our medication programs and our medical, medical programs. <clears throat> Excuse me a second, I'll drink water. <laughs> and then, ah, oh, this is amazing. <clears throat> The, the placebo response is one of the best documentations of this mind-body connection. Uh, it's, it's just remarkable, you know, and um, people think of placebo, that's some psychological thing. And now we realize that, you know, the placebo effect is really a, um, a, a, a means of it. your brain is trying to remember wellness. In fact, they talked about re Re, uh, renaming the placebo effect called uh, to call it the the remembered wellness response remembered wellness response because we do want to get better and when the attitude or belief towards treatments can enhance the placebo effect or if our people are negative towards treatment or they're, they're discouraged or don't have hope towards treatment that's called a nocebo and that happens both with with with, uh, with patients and with physicians um, and doctor, and doctor that gives you know, and hope, you know, that drives this placebo effect. Person that says, oh, I don't know if this medicine will work, give it a try. Yeah, what the heck? When, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they've actually shown that very good studies, they've shown that even in even treatments like cancer, that, that people re, um, respond better when they're given a, the, the positive response, the placebo effect, rather than the nocebo effect, which can take away the response. You know, and that's the whole the essence of a care provider. You know, you, you know, it, it doesn't matter for a person what degree they have. We have, there's MDs and DOs that I don't really consider to be physicians because they don't provide truly care into doing their things daily. But, you know, I have, I have nurse practitioners uh, here, you know, uh, Sharon Jung, who, who works with our Parkinson's, you know, she's truly a physician because she provides care and that's the key. You know, even yeah, yeah. By the way, you know, again, like this, this is a painting that was Saint Luke, who was the uh, the uh, uh, the gospel physician. You know, you look at that picture, and you know, he doesn't have medicine, but he has care, and that's all it takes sometimes to produce that placebo effect. And this is not psychological. They've actually shown in in um, in, in studies that um, that dopamine, you know, what we want with with Parkinson's medicines. Is, is released with Parkinson placebo effect. You know, in, in these, all the studies we've shown, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. And also for pain medicines, you know, people take placebos and get better, their pain gets better. 
whether it's, and, and we actually, they actually can document that the opioids and the endocannabinoids, you know, that it's in, in our natural responses like marijuana, but it's actually natural to our body, uh, they're, rele they're released when people take, you know, certain, even it's a placebo effect, uh, as opposed to um, uh, cytokinins that are released during, uh, that are that released during the nocebo. Cytokinins are things that produce inflammation and increase pain. When people are exposed to nocebos, the actual, those are, those are increased. So that whole idea, what I said earlier, again, the re remembered wellness response, our brain wants to be better but you have to have the right attitude. Again, that comes on to attitude. So you need to have confidence and your optimism in treatment uh, to, for your mind to actually help enhance your, the treatments you're getting anyway. And, they, and they've show, uh, shown this is a, a, another uh, metabolic study, a PET scan study showing the, 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 do the dopamine release in the brain. And they've shown, as it says here, um, that I'll just read, read this so that you can, yeah, easier for you. So, so the placebo administration resulted in an increase in endogenous dop dopamine release in butamine compared to that following levodopa. So people that took levodopa, they had a release of, 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 of have dopamine increase in their, in their brain, of course. That's why we treat people with, with uh, all sorts of, uh, of Parkinson medications. But they, they are able to actually document that you're, you can increase your, do your endogenous dopamine release with a placebo response. And so you know, it's not like you have to fool your brain, you know, to placebo. It's really a matter of recognizing, having confidence and optimism and, and um, uh, security that, the, that your treatment will work. Uh, so, but again, that's the whole, that's a, this whole mind-body connection, very important. And then matter of caring for your brain. I'll be the time here for 12 minutes. Um, <clears throat> caring for your brain, this whole idea of, of happiness. Yeah, you know, we all are pursuing happiness, you know, and there's, there's just been, there was some, I don't remember the statistic, but how many thousands of books and, and seminars, everything else, being how to achieve happiness in the world, you know, <laughs> and there was a real good book that was, uh, that was uh, uh, very entertaining, it's a book of joy um, uh, that, uh, that uh, documented conversations between good friends of Dalai Lama from the Buddhist tradition and Desmond Tutu from the Christian um, uh, religion um, uh, and, and how, the, how, the, how they both integrate into this whole concept of what do we need to, you know, to bring uh, happiness and joy to our, to our world. And part of it is, uh, you know, we always, there's a human nature to always to pursue more than what we have. That's really what, what um, you know, they, what people are always doing. They're trying to pursue happiness. And, uh, and comparing, you know, as Winston Churchill said, you know, the, the comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. And, uh, be, and rather than being satisfied with what we have. And that's the whole idea is, is, is if, we can be, if we can be focused on what we have rather than what we would like to have, you know, that's really one of the keys to, to happiness. You know, if there's anything that's positive about this, the whole COVID situation for people that, that survive it, obviously, um, physically and, mo and financially and emotionally, is that we've taken away some of the things that are that are joy joyful to us. Some of the things that are that, are, that we think we're bringing happiness It's almost like a fast from our thing from these things. And they've actually shown over time that you know people that that fast from things that that they think bring them happiness when they come back to them, they gives you a greater enhancement. So hopefully we'll have greater gratitude and greater enhancement of our joy, what we've always been, we've taken for granted uh, in our life. Uh, so it's, uh, and so there's, you know, this is so unique. I mean, the pursuit of happiness is unique in every single person, what it actually works for them. But, you know, they have a, a diagram related to, you know, making sure that we have a, our community where we're engaged with other people. You know, that's so important, you know. If we have created, if it's not with the, the wild population, at least develop our inner circle of people. Uh, look forward, have hope. Hope is really important. You know, make sure you take care of your body with regular sleep and rest uh, and, and exercise. Um, love is really one of the keys, of course, you know, to, to, our, to our pursuit of, ha of happiness. So, um, but whatever it, ta it takes for you, but this, that's really, again, yeah, enhancing the, the health of your, of your mind. And as you enhance the health of your mind, you're able to be motivated to do other things, you know, and, and you're able to enhance the fu function of your brain, which then en en enhances the function of your entire body.
again, t- you take care of yourself. There's a little good, <laughs> another good little book that um, I just emphasize that we're always emphasizing, we're always pushing towards doing something. Sometimes we just need to give time back, just re- relax, recover, and um, maybe we have too much of that lately <laughs> for some people. But uh, but uh, you know, sometimes we need to not just sit and we need to do something, and sometimes we need to just sit and not do something. So the whole point of all of this is that lifestyle management is not a cure but is for disease, but just makes life better and in many different ways and more tolerable. So, you know, maybe we don't need to do the, all these things, you know, yeah, you can still function okay, but you know, it's not a matter of just getting by, it's a matter of what can we do th- th- to make us better? What can we do to make our mind better? What can we do to make our brain better? Uh, that is more than just what's necessary to, in, in order to get the most out of, out of our life. So <clears throat> then we have time for some questions and, um, and, uh, and either by, by uh, written or, or speaking, apparently. Yeah. Um, excellent. Thank you, Dr. Hogan. Um, this stuff really resonates with me. I was raised with the, my mother constantly saying, attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. Every time I had poor me. So all this stuff kind of resonates. So thank you. That was, I'm, I'm glad that it actually makes physical changes in my brain. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to open it up to questions. And I tried this on the last take control and it worked. So you may either um, type your questions into the Q&A box or you can raise your hand and I will unmute you and you can ask your questions verbally. Please keep your questions general in nature. Um, and um, this isn't a specific treatment plan sort of thing. So keep them general in nature. And um, to the topic of this health for your brain and lifestyle um, so that Dr. Hogan can answer them. So um, I'll give you a second to think about your questions, either type them in or raise your virtual hand, which you will find a little button down below to raise your virtual hand. Um, And while you're doing that, let me tell you about the next Take Control, which is September 11th. Um, And it'll be Dr. Kamani talking about case studies from the exam room. Um, So I will be sending more information out about that, but that will be happening on September 11th. Um, And if you need to exit before all the questions are done, um, there will be a survey window that pops up. If you would take a second to let us know how you're enjoying the programs and give us feedback, how we can improve and suggest other topics, that would be terrific. We really do take your feedback very seriously. So, um, I don't see any hands raised yet, but I did have a couple of questions. If you want to unshare your screen, um, Dr. Hogan, it'll just be the two of us. Um, One question that came in before the presentation was, um, and you did talk a lot about this, but specifically during this time of this COVID-19 madness that we're all living through, um, what would you say are... I'm going to say your top two best ways to maintain positivity or just in general, how do you maintain positivity during this time? And I think it's, as we mentioned, it's, it's so easy to bring the whole world into your brain and, and it, because it can, becomes overwhelming and then we have so much, so much conflicting information that's coming in that, and because the reality is that no one in the world really knows <clears throat> what the end result is going to be or what we should be doing. And, and to, Sure, to recognize those those aspects, but to try to bring you know to maintain your own bubble, you know, to have family around you, to maintain your positivity, what you're doing on this day specifically, to your own health with your meditation and your exercise and and everything we can do, you know, um, we do my uh, my wife and I do a lot of dance, you know, for example, you know, because dance is, is very positive. You know, we have a picture up there is, of his dancing, you know, um, and it's, it, his dancing, um, again, brings you out of the outside world, gets you exercise, you know, produces some of that play that we talked about that, that gives you the, the, uh, the positivity in life. And, and because it, it's, it's just so easy to get, to get the, 
all the uh, the noise out there, you know, built up in your brain when you want to bring that noise down and and maintain what you can do on that particular day. But there's still a great, wonderful things going on in the world. People are, are wonderful. It's just a matter of, you know, of, um, of recognizing what you can do and what you can do. That's a whole thing, you know. <laughs> Recognize, you know, what uh, what what uh, you can have a control over, and um, and not uh, and not let it over otherwise overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. So turn on some music and dance in your kitchen if you can. <laughs> Since we can't go out to a physical club and dance. <laughs> Yeah, we talk. Yeah. We, we didn't talk much about music, but that is true. Music, the right kind of music, also affects your brain, your mind. You know, it's and so that's another aspect that we use every day. Um, that uh, that kind of tunes us into the right mood. You know, right, right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, questions from the audience. Anybody want to raise their virtual hand? It seems like you covered all the topics. There's a lot of additional reading that folks can do. And I think I forgot to ask you this before we started, but um, can I share your um, a PDF of your slides so people oh, yes. can see those oh, absolutely. resources? Absolutely. Okay. And if people have Great. questions, you know, they can they can uh, contact you or however you want to do because we can we can answer questions online or email and because things come up and um, you know Joan's very very open to having. Uh, uh, questions about nutrition and because there's things that, that people don't know over time or, or, or um, uh, get confused about over time that we need some questions. Just maybe just motivation, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you can always email APDANW at APDAparkinson.org um, and uh, I can forward okay. your questions to the experts. Right. Um, so I do have a couple of people raise their hands. So Anne, I am going to click allow you to talk. So let's see if this works. You need to unmute yourself though. Okay. There an you go. Anna, an annotated bibliography. That would be helpful, an annotated bibliography? Yes. Okay, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, Send we'll out, <laughs> pull, those, pull those resources together. You know, and, okay. and as far as the bibliography, you mean like uh, research studies, is that what you're talking about? Are you, are you the, whole, the, the whole panoply. For the books and stuff? Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean by annotated, for exercise, for spiritual growth, uh, info on Parkinson's. That's a good suggestion. Okay. Let's work on that. Um, so I'm going to mute you now, Anne, and I'm going to go to a call. Go to our caller who has raised their hand. So I just have a number. So hello, welcome. There we go. Am I am I on? You are on. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say you know I'm just a big cheerleader of <laughs> of what we've been talking about today. So thank you for presenting. It's like affirmations and new information um, and so but here's my question is that it seems like we're starting to to look into Parkinson's through the window of like now even the molecular molecular level and with what you are doing what do you think is next or on the forefront that we could be looking forward to yeah, there, that's a really excellent point. Is that, you know, we're because we we think of everything so mechanically of um, of uh, you know toxins and something that's you know destroying cells. You know, it, when you when you go down really to the quantum level, is there something that we can do from a from a uh, physiological basis through our 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 thought and our meditation. There's, there's, there are researchers that are out there that are working on this, this, this whole concept of, uh, of what can, what can, can you do with, the, with neuroplasticity through our, our, um, what we can do for ourselves. And I totally admit that I, that I don't have a great grasp on that exactly where it's, where it's going to going to do go. But, but your concept is exactly right. That you know, uh, I don't think we can totally rely. On on um, on medication uh, in in the future without without thinking about what are we doing you know from from a quantum standpoint and actually improving the health of ourselves. 
Great question, though. Great, thank you. So um, there's a question in the Q and A, but I'm not sure what the question is. Um, so I'm going to put it in the form of a question: Are there parallel studies with music on how it affects the brain? Well, there's <clears throat> there's another book called Musicology <laughs> uh, that is written by. Um, uh, The neurologist, I'm blocking his name, of course. Um, I'll remember in three seconds when I don't think about it. <laughs> but musicology and really the, the value of, of, of music on the brain. I mean, it's, it's really more than just entertainment. And um, <clears throat> his name is Sir. He has, he has, a, he has a Sir behind him because <laughs> he's okay. an <laughs> um, English neurologist. Uh, people probably are, everybody has probably said me is probably remembering his name. But um, uh, but it's you know it's it's very really, very important yeah I think I think we need there's a whole another chapter probably I could have brought up in this lecture there's so many things I probably could have brought up here in this in a mm -hmm. short time but music I think is an important aspect of of health to the brain we can it just you know it it does something to our brains more than just listening to something there is really a whether it's vibratory sense or a or internal um, epigenetic changes that are occurring. Uh, there's definitely a huge value to to our, to our health with the with the, the the type of music that resonates with each person. Yeah, yeah, and so, um, uh, musicology is the name of the name of the book. Musicology, okay. And um, for those of you um, in the audience, um, so we're going to start. And you spoke of dance um, in the fall in September. Um, we have a gentleman who has Parkinson's, has been a dancer for his entire life and he's going to do a Sunday dance class and he's very focused on how dance has really helped him with the music and the joy that it brings and so I'm really excited that we'll be doing a a weekend exercise class which is unheard of in the Parkinson's community and b having someone who wants to bring this joy and this incorporation of music and how it moves your body um, so that'll be coming in on Sundays, Sundays in September, um, coming out. And then you talked about yoga. And so we now are funding two free yoga classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, with Peter Lynch, who teaches Parkinson's yoga. And all of that stuff is virtual because um, we know that we're going to be in this for a while. And so moving our body and creating joy and doing all those things that build that neuroplasticity. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to make sure that we're doing that. So. Yeah. In retrospect, I think I should have put another little section in this, in this uh, talk on, on specifically on dance. We had, um, you know, we often think about dance, how it's important physically, but how it's how important it is for our mind too. You know, we, we've had a dance for Parkinson uh, exercise program for quite a while. And, and you see people that come in and they're have a really hard time moving. But as soon as the music starts, as soon as they start dancing, they're just moving freely. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's really amazing how that happens. Other circuits get activated through this process, of, uh, pro this process of music and dance that really do improve people's function. And you have the, the, the laughter, if you're, if you're in a group, <laughs> you, know, you, have, you have the laughter and you have the joy, you have the music. It's just an all encompassing important aspect of, I think, of our, um, uh, of our health. And, and that's why, you know, uh, for even though, you know, my wife and I are very involved in other types of athletics, but the joy, some of the joy that we have with the athletics is comes through dancing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, great. Mm -hmm. So any other questions from the audience before we conclude? We go on a little over time. So again, if you do have burning questions that come to you like later, you can email them and I can get them to Dr. Hogan or get them to another resource. Um, so any parting words, Dr. Hogan, before we wrap up today? No, just, just think about your, that, you know, that, those 10 aspects. And think about those on, a, on an everyday basis. What can you do you know, besides your medication function to help yourself? You know, take, be your own health advocate. Take, take control of yourself to a greater degree than just giving over your health to someone else. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I will be setting up a, I'll send out a follow-up email with the slides and the link um, to it being on YouTube, which will happen early next week. And um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And I want to thank you, Dr. Hogan, for all your insights on this. Um, you know, September, we'll have another program. 
um, on the monthly, our monthly schedule of these take controls. Um, so uh, please keep an eye out on your email for that. And um, feel free to email us or call us um, with uh, any feedback. And please do take the survey when you sign out, because that does give us feedback that we then in turn um, make changes to the program. So I hope everyone um, survives this uh, upcoming uh, hot times that we're about to have. And um, I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. And thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, Dr. Kogan. And yeah. we'll see you next time, um, well, at least in September with Dr. Kamani. So thank you very much. Yeah, Take bye. care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.